Live from Edward T. Berry Ice Rink on the campus of UMass Boston for some women's New England Hockey Conference action featuring the Plymouth State University Panthers and the UMass Boston Beacons. Good afternoon, everybody. Andrew Bluestein here with you, flying solo today. Thank you for joining us on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Well, the Beacons coming into today having lost their last four games in a Panthers team, you would just like to say it's things can't get much worse, but they can if you're the Panthers because they've lost their last eight games coming into today. So expect both these teams to be hungry for a win. A lot of losing around these two teams as of late. As we take a look at some season stats heading into today's contest, both these teams only are, are at under two goals per game. Beacons at 1.70, the Panthers at 1.30. Goals against average, the Beacons at 3.50, and the Panthers at 3.20. Power play has been a big problem for the Beacons all season. Just three power play goals sitting at 6.7% like to see that going today and the Panthers strong on the power play uh, they've scored nine power play goals sitting at around 25 percent just over and on the penalty kill the Beacons have the edge there at 84 percent to the Panthers 82 percent shots per game the Beacons 24 Panthers only coming in at 21 shots per game and they have had a hard time putting the puck in the net this season as you see up at the top the 1.3 goals per game and penalty minutes beacons uh, at 8.40 and Panthers at 5.20 let's take a look at today's matchup to watch as first for the Pitt Plymouth State Panthers Megan Hamilton coming into today three goals one assist for four points on the season she sits at a minus six and for the beacons Kaylee Kozic who missed some time good to have her back as she comes in with three goals, three assists for six points at minus five. Now let's take a sneak peek at the Beaks games coming up. And today's schedule is today, January 7th, women's basketball defeating Plymouth State 55 to 35, the final. Men's basketball will be at Plymouth State. That'll be a 3 p.m. tip off. Women's ice hockey, obviously, here today against Plymouth State and men's ice hockey will be at Skidmore College. That puck drop will be at 4 p.m. Now let's go around the New England Hockey Conference today. Check out that schedule. Other games going on. Worcester State defeating Southern Maine 6-3. Or rather, that game is still going on. It's in the third period. New England College will be at Elmira. That's also a 3 p.m. puck drop. Castleton at Johnson & Wales. Uh, down the street in Attleboro, that'll be a 4 p.m. puck drop. And Norwich at William Smith will be a 4 p.m. puck drop as well. And that's what we have going on around the New England Hockey Conference today. And now let's take a look at the keys to the game. First we have got to tighten up on defense. Beacons have had struggles in their defensive end as of late we said coming into today losing their last four games and I'm sure the same could be said for the Panthers as they've la lost their last eight as I mentioned off the top of the broadcast number two create turnovers and offensive chances we saw the shots on goal sitting at around 24 you want to get pucks to the net and create offensive chances start uh, a four check if you can cycle the puck down low Work on that low to high, low to high, uh, high to low game if you can, and get pucks towards the goal. That'll produce some chances. And three, remedy home woes as the Beacons coming in just one and five at home this season, and the Panthers coming in 0 and five on the road. So perhaps a good spot for the Beacons to take advantage of that and grab a win here at Edward T. Berry Ice Rink. Well, both teams look to take the ice as we have the officials taking the ice. Today's referees, Jessica Leclerc, uh, excuse me, Leclerc and Michael Komich. The linesmen will be Danica Korpax and Ken Kaposi.
In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back to go over the starting lineups and the goaltenders for today's game. Passion is love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. Proportion to me is the lived experience of our Division III student athletes. They balance life from an academic perspective and the rigors of competing at a high level, bonding with teammates and building lifelong friendships. But they also are involved in their communities. They work jobs and internships and volunteer. They've learned to be resilient. Diverse experiences are setting them up for the future. Passion's love. Five campus UMass system is the university that educates the workforce of Massachusetts. We recognize that we are truly here for a reason, and that recognition inspires us and drives us every single day. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're gonna have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, be a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I want to be. Paris changed my life and I got there through UMass. Those very specific cinema moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in and a woman in a long gown. And it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty, style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. It's one of those moments you never forget. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow start. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the wins. Not the shiny nail biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, then I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily are a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. Hey, welcome back here inside Edward T. Berry Ice Rink. Andrew Bluestein here with you on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Let's take a look at today's starting lineups. First for the Plymouth State Panthers at left wing. It'll be Chantal Ross at center. Megan Hamilton at right wing. Robin Grant on defense. Lauren McNeil with Mia Zanaboni. And for the Beacons, it'll be at left wing. Liz Pramp at center. Emily Hansen at right wing. Kaylee Kozich on defense. Gabby Schantz and Melina Maggio. Today's starting goaltenders... 
first for the visiting Plymouth State Panthers. It'll be Amelia Julian, the junior out of Apple Valley, Minnesota. She comes in with a 2-9 record of 3.29 goals against average and a .894 save percentage. For UMass, it'll be Leah Bosch, the freshman out of Minnetonka, Minnesota, with a 3-3 record, a 2.90 goals against average, and a .912 save percentage. We're ready for puck drop here in Boston. And we're underway. Beacons control the faceoff. Hansen wins it. And that one will be chipped in by Santa Augustine. Panthers control in the neutral zone. That one's sent towards Maggio. She goes D to D to Shantz. Plays it for Cramp on the far side. Had trouble with it. Hansen able to swoop in. She'll backhand it into the corner behind the net. There to get it, though, is Lauren McNeil. She'll play it up. And that one stretched through the neutral zone over the stick of Katie Perillo. That one laid up by Claire Giuliano, but not out. Panthers able to stay on it. That one's chipped into the far corner. And a collision behind the net. Nice job by Addie Buddington taking care of her assignment as Beacons look to move it out. Having trouble with it was Buddington. She's able to get back to her feet and move it out to center. Liz Cramp with it. Turns it over as a pass to the near side. And stonewalled, though, but it leaks through into the Beacons end. Back to get it is Katie Wilbert, Beacon's leading scorer. Panthers regain possession though. That one's sent in from the top of the point by Alyssa Borbridge. Now it's behind the net, comes in front, and Leah Bosch will take a whistle. Quick one here, 18.46 to go in the first. And it'll be the Panthers with the first offensive zone faceoff. So the faceoff, the left of Leah Bosch. Panthers able to win the draw, comes up top to Zanaboni. She sends it around the kick blade, now to the near side in the corner. Margot Butters tries to chip it up, and that one goes back to center. Henningsen Brown with a chance, coming down the near side, stays with it, takes it behind the net, has Wilbert in front, stays with it though. Now up top to Boyd, D to D to Butters. Her shot is gloved aside by the netminder Julian and goes behind the net. Beacons look to stay on the attack. They give it away. That one sent back to center. A two-on-one opportunity for the Panthers. Closing. Shot on goal. Saved by Bosch. Off the rush. That was Katie Perillo who threw it towards the goal. Beacons look to regroup as it's sent around to the near side. Margot Butters will swoop in. She looks up ice. Takes it to the neutral zone. Tries to bank it off the near boards but gives it away to Santa Augustson. Now here comes Plymouth State. Through the neutral zone. Margot Butters with it. Flips it high in the air through center, and it'll go back to the Panthers zone. In on the netminder, Julian. Leaving it off for her defenseman, Augustson. Now it comes towards the near side. As Cunningham tried to play it through the middle, gives it away, and then it's knocked back to center. Emma Webster gets there first. Moves it to the neutral zone, but turns it over. De Simone on her own, takes it behind the net. Now passing it over to Swanson. Now up top to the point. That shot deflected. They score. That was Isabella Borbridge who let it go from the point. Somebody got a piece of it in front, and it goes in for a Panthers 1-0 lead. So not what the Beacons wanted here early on. We talked about both teams coming in on long losing streaks for the Panthers it's now eight games so both teams you'd figure would be hungry and it's the Panthers who get on the board first UMass controls the ensuing faceoff Buddington plays it through the middle off of the skid of Hansen back the other way Tyler Thomas flips it in but Kaylee Kozic gets there and sends it back the other way Abigail McGee into the neutral zone. It's a body. UMass has it. It's Kozic on the far wing. Has Hansen going towards the goal. Kozic stays with it. Takes it behind the net. Being bothered there by the defenseman. And the Panthers get possession back and move it back to center. Robin Grant tried to move it over to Chantal Ross and she'll flip it in. Goes to the far corner. Buddington will get there first. Shields the puck and reverses it back behind the net for Maggio. Maggio gives it away. 
as the puck retrieval, a bit of an issue here early on for the Beacons in their own zone. Puck being battled in the corner. Now it comes to McNeil. She throws one towards goal, and Bosch able to freeze the rebound for a quick whistle. Bit of a slow start here for UMass as the Panthers have controlled the play as we get a look at the replay from the goal. And not sure what it hit in front, hit something. It may have been the defenseman for UMass who was in the way there. Nonetheless, Plymouth State has a 1-0 lead. Henningson Brown moving it the other way. Here comes Capaldi as Henningson Brown tried to slip it through and it goes into the corner and onto the stick of Emily DeSimone. Now it's being battled for. UMass gets it back and then gives it away rather quickly again. Now pass to the near side. Trying to headman that out was DeSimone. Comes back to center, played by Giuliano. UMass looking to break in and once again, puck retrieval an issue as Plymouth State has possession. McNeil plays it to the near side, goes back to her on the pass from DeSimone. McNeil through the middle of her own end, takes it into the neutral zone. Looking to enter the zone, getting bothered there by Rafler. Puck in the neutral zone, now it comes back on defense to Brenna Smith. Stretch pass too far ahead, and this will be an icing. 15-10 to go, opening period. Plumas State drawing first blood in this one. And the Beacons will have their first offensive zone faceoff of the afternoon. And it'll be the second line out there. Leonard in the middle with Rafler and McDougal on the wing. Butters and Schantz on defense. As Leonard was able to win the draw, but it comes back to center. Rafler. Now has it, she'll take it back in. Rafler with speed, working on the near side. Throws one on goal and a save by Julian and she'll smother it for a whistle. But the Beacons finally generating something on offense here early on and hopefully that gets them going as a good reaction from the bench. As they were banging their sticks there as that second line will stay out. Coma State changes the third line out. Addie Swanson will take the face off against Sydney Leonard. Swanson wins it. Goes in the near corner, but Rafler's there first. Rafler, nice move, stays with it. Tries to chip it towards the middle, goes to the far side, and Plymouth State will ice it as this one goes the length of the rink. Butters back first as faceoff once again will come back into the Plymouth State zone, and UMass will make a change as they send their top line out. Hanson, Kozic, and Cramp. Also making a change on defense, Buddington and Webster. Hanson and Swanson. Swanson wins the faceoff, goes back to Borbridge. Goes D to D to McGee, and it's tied up on the far side. Staying with that one is Augustson. That one's reversed, and nice job by Liz Cramp, who steals the puck, stays with it. It's a stalemate, and Plymouth State comes out with it. Now through the middle of the ice. It's Libby Carter, she'll bring it in on the near side. Webster closing in on her, Kozic picks her pocket from behind. Kozic looking up ice, takes it past the center line, will dump it in, and she'll head off for a change. Liz Cramp though on the far side gets there first. Tries to chip it in, Hansen couldn't get there. And the Panthers once again with possession. Behind the net is McGee maneuvering with it. Now it comes out towards the top of the point as Cripaldi swooped in. Now Buddington up top. Slips it through to Cramp. Cramp looking for a tip in front. They score! It was Cripaldi on the doorstep who tipped it home and the Beacons have tied it 1-1. So after a bit of a slow start for UMass, they finally start generating some offense. The last three shifts, they had tilted the ice and a real strong play there. And Trapaldi finishing it off. And that is her first goal of the year and her first collegiate goal as the freshman from Brick, New Jersey cashes in. So 1-1 now here. Approaching 13.40 to go in the first. Back to get it is Boyd in her own end. Taking it behind her net. Leaves it for Trapaldi again. Henningson Brown loses it and it's chipped back to center. Wilbert though plays it ahead. And it's tied up in the official circle. 
Coming out with that is Augustson for the Panthers. Now played up by Smith. That one chipped in by Taylor Thomas. Back to get it, Maggio. She'll play it. Puck rides the dasher, falls back to the ice. Wilbert now has Henningsen Brown in the middle. Wilbert off the boards to Henningsen Brown on the near side. Her shot goes off the side of the net. She stays with it. Henningsen Brown being bothered on the back check by Carson Moffitt. As the Panthers will get the puck back and that one sent back to center. Bounces off the stick of Thomas right to Schantz. She'll play it through the middle. Middle Rifler takes a spill. As back the other way come the Panthers. That one flipped in by Mia Zanaboni. Now goes to the far side, McDougal. Nice pass through the middle to Leonard. She has speed, enters the offensive zone. Tries to pull a move on McGee, but McGee did a good job. Leonard stays with it, though. Now has it on the near side. Backhands it in for McDougal. She gets there first. McDougal tied up by Borbridge. And Leonard now coming in. Strong forecheck here for the Beacons. Puck tied up behind the net. Played to the far side. Pinching in with Schantz. She couldn't keep it in, but Rifler back to cover. She will. Now McDougal dancing with it. Tries to get it to the middle. And that one's picked off. And now back the other way. And that one flipped in on Bosch. She'll stick it. Rebound. That one blocked by Schantz. Schantz rescues the puck. Plays it off the near boards, but not out. Kept in by Swanson. Now up top. Smith walking with it, bounces off her stick. A chance the other way, Cramp almost had Kozic, but she couldn't cleanly handle that puck as it stays in the neutral zone. Nice interception by Kozic on the pass attempt. Now Hansen with it. Hansen backhands it in, she'll chip and chase. Back to get it is Smith for the Panthers. She reverses it for Augustson. Intercepted though. Now up top, Butters couldn't handle the pass. She was looking to go on goal. Now back the other way. Here comes Morgan Cunningham. Her shot is gloved and held by Bosch for a whistle. 11-19 to go opening period. And finally, play starting to pick up here. As we talked about off the top of the faceoff. As we get a look here at the goal by UMass. Very well done. Nice pass in the middle. And Kripaldi finishing it off. Liz Cramp, good vision on the far side. Able to find Kripaldi for her first. And we're 1-1. UMass controls. It's Emma Webster with it behind her own net. And that one chipped through the middle by Henningsen Brown. Kripaldi leaves it for Webster. Or, and that, or rather, that is Wilbert. That one thrown on goal, patted away by the netminder, Julian. Henningsen Brown stays with it though. Gets pumped in the corner. Wilbert came swooping in, but it gets chipped to the near side. Lauren McNeil avoids Kripaldi. Now chips it to the near side for Moffitt. That one played back to the Beacon's end, but right there was Mia Boyd. Now McNeil has it through the neutral zone. Panthers making a change though. McNeil goes to the front of the net, gets knocked down. And a bit of a miscommunication defensively there for UMass as that, that was the only player on the ice. Now Rafler back the other way with speed. Rafler cuts to the middle, stays with it. Gets bothered though, nice defensive play on the back check by Cunningham. She now has speed through the neutral zone. Enters the offensive end, throws it on goal and a save by Bosch. And she'll cover the rebound for a whistle. Good intensity though here after the first few minutes were a bit slow, but these two teams Trading good opportunities as the faceoff will now be to the right of Leah Bosch in the UMass zone. Addie Swanson and Emily Hansen on the draw. Swanson wins it. Now it comes back to Borbridge at the point. Her shot's blocked by Hansen. Schantz plays it to the near corner, but it goes right to Taylor Thomas. Now Emily Hansen has Kozic in the middle, slips it through, two on one. Liz Cramp going to the goal, Kozic waits, and a real strong play defensively by Abigail McGee, who got back and laid out, getting the stick in the passing lane, denying the two on one opportunity for UMass. Now the puck's tied up in the near corner. Emily Hansen has it, tries to center it. Now Liz Cramp cuts to the middle, gets tripped up, no call. Back the other way comes Taylor Thomas for the Panthers. As the rest of her line mates will peel off for a change, she throws it towards goal, blocker to the near corner by Bosch. Now Schantz plays it through the middle. Kozic tries to chip it through to Hansen. Not enough juice on it. Sent right back into the Beacon's end. Schantz 
We'll play it off the end boards as Hansen now off the near boards and Kozic couldn't handle it. Now a centering pass. Hamilton, backdoor pass, saved by Bosch. She got her blocker on it. Nice job by Leah Bosch. Off the good chance. Another shot from the point from Smith gets blocked. Goes to the front of the net. Still loose. And they score. Persistence from the Panthers. And Robin Grant finds the loose puck on the doorstep and puts it home for a 2-1 lead. Well, the Panthers, we talked about it at the beginning of the game, a little sloppy in their own end, and those struggles continuing here at the 8.52 mark. After they had a little bit of an offensive surge, the Panthers punch right back, and they'll regain the lead. It's 2-1, and they'll control the ensuing faceoff. That one's chipped in by Hamilton. Back to get it is Claire Giuliano. Giuliano on the near side out of her own end with speed through the neutral zone. The defenseman taking it herself. Keeping it. Takes it behind the net. Gets bothered though by McNeil. Comes out to Wilbert at the point. She'll flip it to the near side. Capaldi gives it away and that one's sent back to center. That's a foot race as Buddington gets there first. And Beacon's control goes to the far side. Henningsen Brown couldn't handle that pass and it's flipped right back in. That one played up by Giuliano off the glass and that will go in. It's ruled an icing, but they wave it off because the netminder Julian made a move towards the puck. Beacon's catch a break there. McDougal whacking at it. That one's sent back to center. Rafler with it. Plays it to Butters. Butters will flip it in and that one hits a body off of Borbridge. That one sent towards goal, sticked away by Julian. Puck loose in the near corner. McDougal has it, gets bumped into the end boards. Leonard now with it. Leonard slips it towards goal, looking for Rafler a little bit too far ahead. Now Boyd keeps it in. That one sent past McDougal. That one played through the middle. Puck bouncing, still loose, and the Panthers will find it. And that one's flipped back to center by Carson Moffitt and Played in as both teams making a change. Tied up in front of the Panthers bench. Liz Cramp flips that one in, but it goes right onto the stick of Katie Maloney. Now Webster with it. Webster looking to go through the middle to Kozic, but Hansen rescues a loose puck. Hansen throws it towards goal, and that one's sticked away by Julian. Don't think Hansen got as much as she wanted to on that shot, but UMass stays with it. Hansen up top. Webster walking in from the point. That one gets blocked off the stick of Cunningham. Kozic tries to stay with it. That one chipped back to center. And back to get it will be Gabby Schantz. Schantz takes the pass. Now hits Kozic on the near wing. Kozic through the middle to Hansen. Hansen stays with it. Flips it in. Chases. She'll get there first. Good effort by Emily Hansen on a tour of the offensive zone. Gets it through to Kripaldi. And that one explodes off of her stick on the backhand. And now sent back the other way. Gabby Schantz, though, looking to move it ahead as it's in the neutral zone off a of body. Schantz stays with it at the red line. Tried to get it through to Wilbert, and now Wilbert on her own tried to get it behind the net, but the Panthers get possession. Nice play, though, by Buddington off the bench, and she takes a spill, as does Zanaboni. Beacons with it. Wilbert a chance on the doorstep. She gets robbed point blank by Julian. Another great chance for the Beacons, and they can't execute as that puck sent back to the near side. Maggio taking it behind her own net. Looks up ice through the middle. It's Wilbert. Three on two. Reifler has Henningsen Brown in the middle. Reifler tried to play it towards goal. Another nice defensive play by the Panthers coming from Borbridge. That one tied up in the neutral zone as Hamilton tries to individual effort it towards the Beacons end and it's flipped back towards the Panthers end. McGee Plays it through the middle. Now with speed. As that one sent in on goal, Bosch will stick it to the corner. Leonard gets there first, but that one disrupted and sent back in by Moffitt. Beacon staying with it, though. Leonard a chance. Now she has it. Working on the far side wing. Nice defensive play by Abigail McGee. Puck tied up in the near corner. That one flipped around. 
the kick played as the Panthers look to exit. They'll get it through the neutral zone. It's Augustson, the defenseman. She'll flip it in. Back to get it is Boyd. She reverses it for Butters. Butters off the glass and nearly hit the official in the head with that clear attempt. Took a funky bounce. McNeil backhands it, but it goes right to Boyd. Boyd through the middle. Hits Cramp. Cramp on the far side will chip and chase. Liz Cramp wins the race. Takes it behind the net. Cramp will stay with it at the top of the circle. Heads towards the middle. Now Shantz with it. Throws it towards goal. Doesn't get through. Hit a body in front. Puck sent behind the net. Getting there first is McNeil. But a good job by Hansen on the forecheck. Keeping it alive. Now that one sent by Butters down low to Hansen. She stays with it. Tries to cut towards the goal. Gets bothered and the puck goes back to the corner. That one flipped up and out of play for a whistle. And with 3.51 to go, the faceoff will stay in the Panthers zone. And the Beacons will make a change. But good response again after allowing the goal. As both times the Beacons have been scored on, they've pushed right back offensively. As Katie Wilbert wins that faceoff. Webster tried to throw it towards goal, fanned on it. Now back the other way. Here comes Swanson. She'll dump it in on Bosch, and Bosch will smartly take a whistle as she had Libby Carter coming towards goal. So the faceoff will stay to the right of Bosch, and or rather it'll go to the left as the linesman changing the position. Wilbert and Swanson on the faceoff. Wilbert able to win it. Buddington behind her own net, reverses it for Webster. Webster fans on the clear attempt as Cunningham tries to center it, banks off the apron the other way. Here come the Beacons. Crapaldi on the stretch pass from Wilbur too far ahead. Back to get it is Smith. Crapaldi ties her up in the corner and tries to chip the puck towards the front. Nobody there, though. And the Panthers will get it back. Nice play by Maggio to keep it in. Now a chance on the doorstep. Henningson Brown throws it into a body. Stays with it. That was blocked in front by Brenna Smith. Rapaldi now with it. That one's dumped in. Henningson Brown being bothered on the end boards but stays with it. Gets it to Maggio up top. Maggio towards the goal looking for a tip. Doesn't get it. And it's smothered and held by Julian. But another smart play there by the Beacons as they're generating offense. And a good forecheck the last few minutes here. 2.55 to go in this first period. And this time it'll be Leonard and Hamilton on the faceoff. Hamilton able to win it. Panthers control. That one sent to the far side. Robin Grant leaving it off for Abigail McGee. McGee taking it through. Will flip it in on the backhand. Mia Boyd gets there first. She'll flip it off the kick blade looking for McDougal who couldn't handle it. Sent right back in behind the net. Maggio chasing. She'll get there first. Plays it through the middle. Leonard with speed on the outside. Leonard stays with it in the corner. Has Rapler tried to get it through and it was disrupted and now back the other way. Here comes Chantel Ross. Pulls it to the backhand. Nice move. Goes to goal. And a great save by Leah Bosch. No rebound off the great bid by Chantel Ross, the senior from Ottawa, Ontario. They had a nice little move to the backhand, cut back to the middle, and was pretty much in alone in on Leah Bosch, but Bosch doing a great job positionally smothering that one. UMass controls the ensuing faceoff. Gabby Schantz plays it up for Liz Cramp. Cramp tries to get through center, getting bothered at the center red line by Zanaboni, and it's flipped in. Now breaking out are the Panthers. As that one's flipped in behind the net, Shantz will get there first. And Cramp had a trouble with it. Now it's Prentice Smith with it. She sends it in. Taylor Thomas throws that one on goal, and it's gloved and held by Bosch for another whistle with 1.37 to go. So face off here. To the left of Leah Bosch, who's made some big saves early on. 
Wilbert able to win that face off. Buddington behind her own net. 130 approaching here in this first period. That one flipped through the middle and off this or didn't go off the stick, so it'll be an icing. And this one comes back to the Beacon's end. So we'll do it again this time to the right of Bosch. Same group out there for both teams. Wilbert and Swanson on the faceoff. Swanson won it, but it hits a skate, goes into the corner. Beacons control, Wilbert. Nice pass for McDougal on the far side. Panthers able to keep it in though. Butters now behind her own net, banks it off the boards for Rapler. Kept in at the point by Brenna Smith. Now tied up in the corner as Wilbert battling there with Swanson. Now finally comes loose Wilbert. Final minute of this first period. Rafler with speed on the near side as McDougal going to the net. And another nice play defensively by Sana Augustin. The Panthers have been, done a really good job keeping the Beacons to the outside off the rush on the blue line. You gotta wonder if Beacons tried just to chip and chase because they've been able to create a good four check when they've gotten the puck deep as they take it back in. Webster with it. That'll get flipped to the corner. Final 30 of the first period. Cramp received that puck on the far side getting battled as Hansen swoops in. Hansen muscles it towards the front. Kozic, nice move. Couldn't get it fully on the forehand. Was looking to shoot it and it was bothered by Borbridge. And that one sent back to center. Final 10 seconds. Webster collects. Has Hamilton bothering her. Buck tied up on the near side boards, and that will do it for this first period. A lot of good action from both teams, but it's the Panthers right now who have a 2 1 lead as they had. The two better opportunities capitalizing, capitalizing on them anyway. Beacons did some good things offensively. They were able to establish four check and cycle game when they got the puck in deep. Just a little, pro, a little few, uh, too many problems in their defensive end, a couple of breakdowns which led to both Columbus State goals. And we'll head to the room with Columbus State leading 2-1. So that'll wrap up first period action. Andrew Bluestein here with you on the Beacons Broadcast Network. We'll be back to go over the first period scoring summary and game stats on the Beacons Broadcast Network. UMass Boston women's ice hockey at home for the first time since December 10th, taking on Castleton University in a crucial New England hockey conference matchup. And early on, the Beacons would struggle. Castleton getting the first goal of the game, Brooke Greenwood, her sixth of the season on the pass from Darby Polisi. After a Beacon defender falls down, makes it 1 0 early on. And then the Beacons would fall down 2 0 as Alex Johnson, that's her third of the season, Emily Harris's pass, redirected off the foot of Caitlin Bartolini. And now, just like that, it's 2 0 Spartans. But the Beacons would have a lot of scoring chances in this one. Margot Butters early on with a nice slap shot there against Kirsten DeChico in net. Liz Cramp with a scoring opportunity in front. Beacons just unable to get anything going. Then a one on one situation. Leah Bosch with a nice save right there. It keeps the Beacon deficit at 2 0. Cramp again trying to get a scoring chance for the Beacons. Unable to get it by DeChico, but the Beacons would break through eventually. Sydney Leonard, her second of the season, unassisted off the turnover, makes it 2-1. to one. DeChico had lost her stick just prior to that play and could not get it back, and the Beacons capitalized off it. But Samantha Lawler would end up giving the Castleton Spartans a lead of two yet again, her fourth of the season on the pass from Brooke Greenwood. But Emily Hansen responds with her fourth goal of the season, the team-leading fourth goal of the season, off the assist from Kaylee Kosick, who won the faceoff just like that. The Beacons trailing by just one. And they continue to pepper DeChico with shots. Sydney Leonard wrapping it around the goal. DeChico turns it away. Kaylee Kosick with the two-on-two -two situation fires. DeChico up to the challenge. Allie Riefler off of the steal. DeChico right there. It's still 3-2 Spartans. We head to the third. Liz Cramp is going to have a chance in front. 
and it's just stopped again by DeChico. The Beacons taking all the shots they can to the tune of 41 on the afternoon against DeChico, and we're only able to get two goals by her. You see shot after shot just getting turned away by DeChico down the stretch. The Beacons would end up going into a situation where they'd be up six on five because they would go to the empty net late and still just peppering the Castleton goalie with shots, but just not able to get stuff to get through her. Emily Hansen, another shot there. Allie Riefler down the stretch in that six on five advantage. It just goes wide. Hansen, one last chance for the Beacons, no good. And then you see the puck rolling towards the Beacon empty net. We'll go off the post. Time expires. The Beacons drop their fourth consecutive game, three to two to the Spartans at home. They are back in action tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock p.m. against Plymouth State University in a crucial NEHC matchup. The Beacons now 3-4 and four in conference play this season. The five-campus UMass system is the university that educates the workforce of Massachusetts. We recognize that we are truly here for a reason, and that recognition inspires us and thrives us every single day. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete. You're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, being a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. Welcome back inside Edward T. Berry Ice Rink. Andrew Bluestein here with you on the Beacons Broadcast Network. It's the Plymouth State Panthers leading the UMass Boston Beacons 2-1 here in New England Hockey Conference women's action after one period. As we'll look over the first period scoring summary. As that was Plymouth State getting on the board first as Isabella Borbridge Grabbing her first from Addie Swanson and Emily DeSimone. And then Adriana Cripaldi grabbing her first career collegiate goal. Tied things up on a great feed from Liz Cramp off of the far end boards. Addie Bunnington also grabbing an assist on that one. And then Plymouth State struck again from Robin Grant. Her second of the season from Brenna Smith. That's the only assist on that goal. And that's where we stand heading into the second but good back and forth action between these two teams. Good chances on both sides. Now let's take a look at the game stats so far. First period, Plymouth State out shooting the Beacons 13 to eight in that first period. Leah Bosch making 11 saves. She made some big ones. Uh, one notable chance was uh, cutting to the net with Chantel Ross off of a great move down the near side and Leah Bosch shut the door no rebound either. She's been strong so far. Can't fault her on either of the first two goals. Just a couple of defensive breakdowns for UMass. And seven saves for Amelia Julian. A few good chances. She had to make a couple of big saves as well. Face off the Beacons uh, lead in that department 10 to 7. Neither team has had a power play or taken a penalty yet. And that's where we stand going into the second. So that'll wrap up our first intermission coverage as once again it's the Plymouth State Panthers leading the UMass Boston Beacons 2-1 at the end of one. We'll be back for second period action here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Men's ice hockey taking on Caston University on the road. A big New England hockey conference matchup. The Beacons looking to move to 3-4 and four in conference play and ride a four-game win streak in Saturday afternoon after starting the year 2-8. and eight. It'll be all Beacons in this one in the second period. Four goals in the span of just about five minutes. Devin Moran kicking it off with his first goal of the season. And Mike Manzo, Pat Keegan, throwing it in front to him. Manzo redirects it home past Brandon Collette. UMass Boston up 2 to nothing. And then just about a minute later, Jacob Banks, Keegan once again throwing it in front. And Banks finds it, falling away from the goal, gets it by Collette. And the Beacons in control of this one, three to nothing, but they weren't done. Evan Gugans, who had a big weekend at the Codfish Bowl Tournament, his third of the season. Devin Moran finds Blake Coleman, who finds Gugans right at the top of the circle, and he snipes it home. Makes it four nothing, UMass Boston. 
The Spartans would look to respond as you see Jackson Kobelka with his second goal of the season on a pass from Bryce Irwin. Gets it by senior goalie Sam Betts. Cuts into the Beacon lead. It's now 4-1. to one. But Betts standing tall in goal and leading the Beacons to some offensive opportunities. You see Betts making a save right here. And at least to Clay Benkowskis coming the other way in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But Brandon Collette stands tall in net. The Beacon lead still at 3. And then a power play goal once again for the Spartans. Brandon Picard is going to get this one to go past Best. And just like that, the UMass Boston lead is down to just 2. 4-2 to two now at this point. However, Evan Guggen's extending the Beacon lead back up to 3. A power play goal. His fourth of the season. Andy Walker wins the faceoff. Alex Duncan finds Guggen's. His fourth goal in the last three games for UMass Boston. They're in control 5-2. to two. And then a pair of shorthanded goals in the third period for UMass Boston. Ryan Bogan, his first goal of the season after Davis Browning's initial shot, makes it 6-2 to two UMass Boston as time is winding down. Corey Clifton, his third of the season, his third in the last three games, makes it 7-2, to two, which is the final score for your UMass Boston Beacons who are riding a four-game win streak. Sam Best. With 36 saves in net for UMass Boston, a big day in net for him. And UMass Boston now has recorded three-plus goals in four straight games and four-plus goals in three straight games after being shut out in three consecutive games. And this one is a big win for them as they move to three and four in conference play. And they take on Skidmore College in another big NEHC matchup scheduled for 4 o'clock p.m. on Saturday afternoon. Passion's love. Passion is love for what you do. Because I think when you face challenges, it comes down to how much you want it and how much you love it. Passion is what keeps you going forward. Seeing so many people that were like-minded and so hardworking in their sport and academics, being surrounded by like-minded people makes you want to be more passionate. I think it pushes you to a, a different level that maybe you didn't think you had. And you can do the best of both worlds and love all of it. Proportion to me is the lived experience of our Division III student-athletes. They balance life from an academic perspective and the rigors of competing at a high level, bonding with teammates and building lifelong friendships. But they also are involved in their communities. They work jobs and internships and volunteer. They've learned to be resilient. Diverse experiences are setting them up for the future. Passion's love five campus UMass system is the university that educates the workforce of Massachusetts. We recognize that we are truly here for a reason and that recognition inspires us and drives us every single day. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete, you're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, being a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I wanna be. Paris changed my life and I got there through UMass. Those very specific cinema moments in Paris, the subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in and a woman in a long gown. And it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty, style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. That's one of those moments you never forget. 
celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow start. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the limits. Not the shiny nail biter kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Something I discover to myself is that if I have a goal, then I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily are a student athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. I just wanted to get good grades and to do well, but I also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that, and it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. And welcome back here inside Edward T. Berry Ice Rink on the campus of UMass Boston, New England Hockey Conference Women's Action. Plymouth State University leading UMass Boston 2-1 to one after one period as we're about to start second period action. Both teams taking the ice. And we'll see if the trading chances of play will carry over in the second period. We started off a little slow on both sides. It was Plymouth State who got on the board first. And UMass answered right away. And UMass did a good job of uh, establishing a forecheck in that first period. They were able to get the puck in deep at times. We saw a lot of times them trying to force a little too much off the rush. Plymouth State's defense did a good job of keeping them to the outside on those rushes. So we like to see the Beacons kind of chip that puck in behind the defense and kind of generate something there as we're about to get set here for the second period opening faceoff. Hansen and Moffitt will do it at center. The whistle goes and we're underway for second period action. UMass controls off the draw. Schantz tries to backhand it ahead, but that goes right to Katie Perillo who flips it in. Maggio will get back behind her own net, plays it through the middle, and right onto the stick, though, of Santa Augustson. That one sent into the UMass zone as Schantz tried to play it out, hit one of her own players, but now Liz Cramp through center, has speed, and has Kozic heading towards goal. A nice save, or a nice defensive play by Augustin, disrupting that centering pass. Now up top, that shot goes wide from Giuliano at the point. Goes all the way around, back to center. Emily Hansen will get on it, go back to her defenseman, Giuliano, and she'll play it through center ice. And this will be an icing, as ruled by the far linesman. Thought it might have hit something, but it was either behind the red line or it didn't hit anything at all, as the faceoff will come back to the UMass zone. Just under a minute in to this second period. So the faceoff will be to the left of Leah Bosch. As the top line will stay out, Hansen and Megan Hamilton on the faceoff. Hansen wins it, but it goes back to the point off a of deflection. That one sent well wide in the corner by McGee. Getting there first is Giuliano. She stays with it in the corner. As that one Gets deflected back behind the net. Now a centering pass opportunity on the doorstep, and that one goes through the crease wide. 
from the state with a four check here early on in this second period. Is their top line going to work? And we have a whistle. And I believe it may have been a hand pass. So the faceoff will come back to the neutral zone. Both teams getting a full change. As third line coming out, Katie Wilbert will be on the faceoff against Addy Swanson. Just outside the Beacons blue line. The stalemate off the draw. Henningson Brown tried to chip it up. That one, though, stonewalled by Zanabini and sent back in by the Panthers, but right onto the stick of Margot Butters. She tried to play it to Kripaldi in the neutral zone, went too far ahead of her, and that one sent right back in by Plymouth State. Henningson Brown now with it on the near side, gets disrupted. As swooping in there for the Panthers was Cunningham, but it goes back to center. McNeil now with it. McNeil trying to get it to DeSimone, but it went past her as now Boyd. She'll reverse it for Butters. Behind the Beacons net, Butters playing it off the glass, and it go all the way down, and this will not be icing as Wilbert was there first. Kripaldi now with it. Plays it slowly around the kick blade. Henningson Brown swooping in, leaving it off. Kripaldi goes back behind the net, but there first was Addie Swanson. Swanson stays with it. She'll backhand it for Emily DeSimone on the near side. Leonard coming in, though, disrupting that. Will steal it. Leonard throws it towards goal. Funky deflection. Puck still loose in front. Panthers, though, able to find it. It was Zanabini who moves it out back to center, but sent right back in by the Beacons. Zanaboni through middle as swooping in was Rapler. Rapler tries to stick it ahead. Rapler wins the race, stays with it. But a nice job by Zinaboni as this one comes back to center. Emily Hansen now with it. Moves it to the backhand. Took a collision there from DeSimone. McDougal, a nice move as maybe one too many as the second one on the backhand put the puck back in the neutral zone as Rapler was ahead of the playoff side in front of the Beacons bench. So the faceoff in the neutral zone. Right down in front of us here as Hansen and Moffitt on the draw. Moffitt wins it. And that one sent across by Augustson. Webster, D to D to Schantz. Schantz through the middle for Hansen. Hansen had it, lost it, and Panthers will regain possession. Augustson. Chips it on the near side. Taylor Thomas moves it up for Moffitt. Moffitt will chip it in behind the net. Emma Webster first there. As closing in on her was Moffitt. As now on the far side, Hansen tried to chip it through. As that one comes loose, Hansen gets it again. Plays it back to center. Chips it ahead for Kozic. As foot race as Augustin will get there first. Puck behind the net. Cramp tries to poke check it. But Zanaboni stayed with it. Or rather, that's Smith. That one sent to the far side by Moffitt. Beacons control. Hansen had it. Tries to stick it through the middle. Cramp now backhands it. But that goes right into the body of Carter. As she'll take it through the center ice. Back the other way. Working against Bunnington. Nice job by Bunnington getting her stick in the way of that shot. As Maggio now behind her own net. Plays it for Henningson Brown. Had trouble with that exit pass. And we'll go back to Abigail McGee at center. She moves it through for Robin Grant. Hansen whacks it the other way. Henningson Brown. As Maggio in the middle playing up. As bow back the other way. A miscommunication, a two-on-one. Closing is Ross, and a nice glove save by Leah Bosch. Chantal Ross, another chance by herself. And Leah Bosch, and Bosch once again has the answer with the glove. So 15-24 now to go in this second period. So far, it's been the Panthers who have had more puck possession Controlling this game. Beacons able to win that draw. Boyd plays it around for Capaldi. Wilbert with speed trying to win the race. She will. Has Henningson Brown to Zanette. Wheels it in front. Capaldi chips it back for Wilbert as they get tied up on the far side. That one chipped up top. Now Giuliano battling for it. Tied up on the wall right in front of the Beacons bench. Giuliano comes out with it. Sends it in. Hits a skate. And it'll slow down for McGee. 
But a nice job by Henningsen Brown stealing the puck behind the net. She'll stay with it. Leaves it off for Mia Boyd. She'll chip it off the boards and in. Wilbert behind the net. Tries to stick it through. Hits a, another stick and Henningsen Brown with it. Centering pass for Wilbert. Tips it just wide on the doorstep. Rifler with it. Tried to dance towards the middle but it got whacked away by Robin Grant and that one sent all the way back down towards the UMass end and this will be an icing as the ice still a little fresh just over five minutes into this second period so the face off will come back to the Plymouth State end. Both lines will stay out. So Sydney Leonard and Megan Hamilton on the face off. Leonard able to win it. Now Butters up top. Her shot goes just wide on the blocker's side of Julian. Puck tied up in the corner. That one tried to get flipped up by Hamilton. Got deflected, but Hamilton finds the loose puck and now takes it through center. Chips it past Butters. But right there is Gabby Schantz. Schantz looking up ice on the far side for Rafler. As swooping in on that chance was Marissa Pickman. And the Beacons were lucky there as the puck kind of bounced away from her. Butters tries a stretch pass for Rafler as that one too far ahead. And this will be an icing. So the faceoff will now come back to the Beacon zone. It was a good idea there by Butters looking for the stretch pass, but puck a little bit too far in the air ahead of Valley Rafler. So the faceoff will be to the right of Leah Bosch. Second line stays out. Leonard and Swanson on the faceoff. Line's been issuing a warning to the near side wingers. Swanson wins that draw. Comes up to the point as McNeil fires it. The flex wide. Leonard tries to chip it to Rafler through the middle too far ahead. That one sent right back in. Butters back to get it. She'll reverse it to the far side. Gabby Schantz looking to chip it up. As that one played through the middle. There's McDougal first on it so no icing. Beacons make a change. McDougal with speed behind the net. Wheels it towards the middle, looking in front for Hansen. But a good job finding it was Addie Swanson on the back check. Now the puck in front of the Beacons bench, chipped towards the middle. Webster steps into that pass and sends it in. Kozic, and they're going to say icing as Webster, it was close, but she was behind the red line. So again, the faceoff back to the Beacon zone, this time with 13.04 to go in the second period. Beacons haven't been able to generate as much as they did in the first period offensively thus far, although it did take them a little bit to get going in that first period, so maybe the same fate will follow here in the second as that puck comes out to the point. Nice job by Liz Pramp blocking it. That one chipped back towards center. Nice job by Hansen working on Santa Augustin. Beacons doing a good job there. Cramp, a big collision, and Augustin goes hard to the ice as I don't think Cramp meant to do that, but Augustson on the receiving end of that collision as the puck comes out to Webster at the point. Webster couldn't handle it. That was whacked back to center by Katie Perillo. Perillo stays with it in front of her own bench. That one rifled in by Taylor Thomas. Goes behind the net. Webster there first in the near corner. As Perillo on the forecheck swoops in. They had it momentarily, but... Good job by Webster staying with it. She looks to exit the zone. Hits Kozic, one hand on the stick at the blue line, and it comes right back to Webster in the neutral zone. Gives it away, and Webster is going to get called for a penalty here. It's going to be a trip, as Emily DeSimone would have had a breakaway. And I don't think Webster meant to do that, but it's called nonetheless, and that'll be our first penalty on either side here this afternoon. So Emily Webster, or excuse me, Emma Webster will take a seat. The officials discussing. And it'll stand. Head coach Danielle Blanchard pleading her case. But to no avail, so. A power play for the Panthers, and we mentioned off the top of the broadcast, they're really strong. They have nine power play goals on the air, sitting at around 
as they control that face off. Corbridge plays it on the near side for Ross. Ross cuts towards the middle. Tries to slip it through down low, but it comes right to Gabby Sean. She'll trip it to the near side and played out by Wilbert all the way down the ice. Good job there by UMass. So the Panthers look to regroup. Here's Isabella Borbridge. And it gives it away, and Buddington sends it right back in. As that is Addie Swanson. Plays it for Borbridge on the near side. Borbridge scored the opening goal of this contest. That one sent in. Buddington looking to get there first. Tried to, but she fanned on the clearing attempt. Panthers take control. Augustson moving it over for DeSimone. Backdoor pass. It got disrupted. Still loose in front. And it comes to Wilbert. Tries to get it out. And that's going to be ruled a high stick. So the faceoff will come back in the neutral zone. The Beacons got a break there. 101 to go on the Panthers' power play. And we're approaching the halfway point of this contest. 11.05 to go in the second period. And the faceoff will come at center ice. And it'll be Hanson and Perello on the draw. Perello able to win it. Now maneuvering is Carson Moffitt. That one sent by Robin Grant looking for Augustson on the far side. Now the puck down low behind the net. Perello sends it to the far side. Chantel Ross, or rather, the Panthers try to keep it in. And it's an offside, excuse me, that was Carson Moffitt on the far side, couldn't see the number. As the second unit out for the Panthers and the faceoff will come back into the neutral zone. Right in front of the Panthers bench, 31 seconds to go on the Panthers power play. Hanson able to win that face off. Buddington sends it as a soccer headbutt there by Sana Augustson. You don't see that too much in the game of hockey. Usually it's a goaltender, but creative instincts from Augustson as looking to break in. Taylor Thompson on the near side, final 10 seconds of the Panthers power play. The outside, now up top at the point of shot. That one's blocked by Hansen on the bid from Zetaboni. Back to five aside as Kozic exits the box, gets knocked down as that one comes back the other way. With speed, Perello, but a nice job by Schantz on the far side and a collision there in the corner. Schantz comes out with it. With speed out of her own end, gets it to center, but it's sent right back in by Zanaboni. Leah Bosch out to play it. She'll leave it off for Buddington. Buddington was looking up ice, but she'll peel back and use her defense partner. Schantz chips it for Cramp, looking for Hansen now in the middle. McDougal tried to wheel it, as didn't get a lot of mustard on that, and it goes right to Megan Hamilton. Now Chantal Ross with it. It's DeSimone. DeSimone takes it back towards the red line, and now back towards her own blue line. Now peels towards center ice. She'll enter the zone. She'll fire one towards goal. Leah Bosch blockers it to the corner. Nice play by Schantz to chip it past, but it's kept in. And another nice play by Schantz. A two-on-one opportunity as McDougal tried to get it to Leonard, went too far ahead. Leonard stays with it, though. Takes it behind the net. Leonard at the faceoff dot. Throws it towards goal. Hits a body in front. Didn't get through. Maggio got in the way of that pass, but it goes back to the neutral zone. Maggio stays with it. Cuts to the outside. She'll flip it in. That goes off the far corner boards. Augustson tied up. As coming out with it is Rapler. A backhander and a save by Julian and a whistle and an extra whack there from Wilbert. And the Beacons will have an offensive zone faceoff with 8.31 to go in the second period, but a good chance there. Beacons trying to find their rhythm here in the second. They killed off a penalty. Hopefully that will get some momentum going for them as the puck comes to the near side, played ahead as Buddington banks that off the glass. Almost out of play, but stays in. Forbridge plays it through the middle. Nice job by Wilbert on the back check. Kripaldi 
Chips it for Henningsen Brown. She's in alone. Henningsen Brown. And it's saved by Julian. Henningsen Brown stays with it. Up, up at top of the blue line. Buddington towards goal. Deflected in front. And finding it is Julian. And she had a player fall on her head there. I hope she's all right. As the puck was still loose in the crease. And a good job by the Panthers netminder to find it and take a whistle. But we just talked about perhaps some momentum building after the penalty kill for the Beacons as they have a couple of good chances. But it looks like they're going to be shorthanded again as Adriana Capaldi will head off. So the Beacons, right when they had started generating some offense again, they find themselves shorthanded. For the second time in a matter of about 10 minutes here in this second period. Less than that. So the Panthers with another power play. We talked about they have a dangerous one. Hansen able to control that draw though. Now Buddington once again sends out high in the air all the way down the ice. Back to get it is Augustson. Being bothered by Liz Cramp. Cramp picks her pocket. Centers it in front. Nobody there though except for Carson Moffitt. Augustson on the stretch pass for Moffitt. Or rather, Pirello. Pirello leaving it off. That shot saved by Bosch. No rebound. Leah Bosch coming up big there. As she'll get a whistle and the Beacons will get a change. Both teams will change. Leah Bosch making some timely saves here this afternoon. As that one, face off one by Swanson. Nice pass through the middle by De Simone. Was looking for Hamilton, but it went a little far ahead of her. That one sent back down and behind the net in the corner. Chantal Ross now up top. Forbridge a shot. That one sticked aside by Bosch. Now being battled for on the near side half wall. Wilbert digging away. Kept in by De Simone. Now Henningsen Brown in there battling. Puck comes to Butters. Butters tries to play it off the boards. Fanned on the clearing attempt. Panthers stay with it. Chantel Ross walking towards goal. Flips it there. Pad save Bosch. Puck goes behind the net. Panthers stay with it. Swanson now with it. Taking it towards the middle. Swanson throws it towards goal. And a nice glove save seeing it all the way was Bosch. And she'll get another whistle allowing her team to get a change. Panthers change as well, 6.41 to go in the second, 40 seconds to go on the Panthers' power play. They've gotten some good looks, but Beacon's doing a good job for the most part of keeping them to the, to the perimeter as Hansen wins that draw, the face-off specialist. Schantz tries to maneuver it towards the near side, but Robin Grant was able to get it. That one thrown towards goal by uh, Augustin and back to center, though, Hansen. Looking to enter, she'll flip it in. Final 20 seconds approaching of the Panthers power play. Hansen doing a good job there. Battling with Taylor Thomas. She's able to move it over for Mar Moffett. Augustson plays at the far side. Nice move by Robin Grant as she'll enter the zone, it's on side. Final five seconds, now up top. That one thrown towards goal by Moffett, goes wide. And as the Beacons kill off the penalty and they're two for two on the PK so far. Gabby Schantz, good effort, moving it ahead through the neutral zone. One hands it in, stays with it, tries to center it, goes off the apron of the goal, and gives it away. As the Beacons trying to get a change, McDougal in the corner gets tied up, but Leonard has it. Sidney Leonard takes it around on the far side, now towards the middle. Leaving it off for Boyd. Boyd towards goal. Deflected save. Rebound. Puck still loose. And it goes to the outside. And that one flipped back to center. Webster whacks that one back ahead. Beacons tag up. No offside. But Lauren McNeil looking to exit. Gets it to Zadaboni. Now through the middle. Robin Grant enters. Working to the outside. She'll curl back. Gets it to McNeil. Or rather it's disrupted. Was looking for McNeil. Doesn't get through. Grant stays with it though. Beacons will retrieve it. Boyd, behind her own net, plays it around as Leonard chips it back to the neutral zone, and that one's rifled in by Isabella Borbridge. 
Mia Boyd behind her own net, gives it away. Cunningham tipped in front, saved by Bosch, and she'll cover the rebound as Sticks whacking away there, trying to find it, but Leah Bosch froze it, making another big save for UMass with 4.42 to go in the second period. Got another key penalty kill for the Beacons. And they have to find a way to tilt the ice here as they've been trapped in their own end for some good amount of time now. That one's sent in by Borbridge. Wilbert plays that ahead. Kept in momentarily, but Wilbert able to get it. Maneuver it to center, but it's intercepted and sent back towards the red line. Wilbert, relentless though, gets it back. Takes it in. Has Hennington Brown. Wilbert takes it around the net. Gets it to Cripaldi on the far side. Cripaldi, centering pass. In front, they score! Hennington Brown, right in front. Chips it home, and the Beacons have tied it. 2-2, a huge goal. And they get it right after killing the penalty. So the momentum shifting towards UMass with 4.12 to go in the second period. That's what happens when you get pucks towards the front of the net. Good things happen. And Henningson Brown in great position. Able to whack that one home. The freshman from Portland, Maine, or excuse me, Portland, Oregon, will get her second of the season. So we're all knotted up. Hansen wins the ensuing faceoff as that one sent back into the beacon zone. Schantz chips that off the near boards. Now back to center. Two on one opportunity. Hansen and Kozic. Hansen holds it, shoots, and it's saved by Julian. And she's able to squeeze it for a whistle. But you can tell UMass is feeling it. Upping the ante here. Inside the final four minutes of the second period. As that puck chipped into the near corner. Hamilton tried to maneuver it as Smith tries to play it. Hamilton on the far side tries to get it out. Beacons keep it in. Hansen throws it towards the goal. Chipped aside by Julian. Cramp stays with it behind the net. Has Kozic in front. Kozic couldn't win the battle as that one sent back to center. Schantz back to get it as Robin Grant was closing in on her. Liz Cramp loses the puck there. She went down hard to the ice, a little slow to get up. Hope she's okay. Looks to be fine. Kozic in the middle. Maggio now enters the rush. Maggio throws it on goal, blocker to side by Julian. McNeil looking for a stretch pass, able to get it to Thomas. She gets bumped there by Boyd. Reifler wins the puck, taking it behind her own net. Reifler for Butters. Butters tries to chip it out, but it's sent right back in by Carson Moffitt. Boyd playing it around the kick blade. McDougal, that one's chipped to Leonard. Another chance the other day. Other way, Leonard has McDougal going towards goal. Her shot is gloved and held by Julian. But another good opportunity off the rush as we'll get a look at the Beacon's second goal here. Has a good job. Getting Talked about getting pucks to the front of the net. It was Kripaldi who got it there and Henningsen Brown in good position finds it and whacks it home on the backhand to knot things up. Panthers control the faceoff. Robin Grant will flip it in. As we're inside three minutes now here in this second period. Puck behind the net. Centering pass for Hamilton. She stays with it on the outside. Leaving it for Bobrich. Her shot is smothered and held by Bosch. And Leah Bosch, a catalyst perhaps, making a few big saves before the Beacons had tied it up. Making... A few saves that you mark down if the Beacons are indeed able to win this hockey game. She's kept them in it in this second period as it's pretty much been all Panthers. They've had a couple power plays and they've done a good job on the forecheck. But the Beacons generating momentum back the other way. Cripaldi brings it in. 
Looked like it was offside, but they say no. Wilbert stays with it behind the net. Tries to get it through to Cripaldi, but miscommunication there as Robin Grant now has it at center. Nice job by Henningsen Brown on the back check. That goes off a skate. Henningsen Brown will just decide to cross corner dump it as that one sent back to the neutral zone as Ross tries to play it through the middle. Wilbert back in her own end to get it. She'll take it behind her net. Wilbert chips it towards the middle as Webster will chip it in as sent back into the neutral zone. That one rifled off the boards as the Beacons are making a change. Now with speed is Cunningham through the middle. She'll enter the zone. Cunningham leaving it off for De Simone out of the far side. It's Swanson. Swanson in front saved by Bosch and the puck goes behind the net. Chance with it, rifles it off the glass, hits a stanchion. Bad bounce for the Beacons, but Liz Cramp doing a good job trying to muscle it back to center. Panthers able to keep it in. It was Swanson, that one played towards the middle. Simone tries to get it down low for Cunningham. Cunningham throws it towards goal, and Bosch got a pad on it. Now to the near side, we're inside the final minute, approaching 30 seconds. Chance on the rush, looking for Kozic, just under her stick. Final 30, Hansen has it down low, but she was bothered enough by Perello, and Perello will take it on her own through the middle. Nice move, tries to cut towards the middle, and she goes down. Nice job by Maggio. Maggio now will head man it ahead through center ice, backhands it. Doesn't get a lot on it, and back the other way, Brenna Smith springing Thomas. Thomas throwing it towards goal. That one got bothered by Kozic, and Bosch sticks it aside. That one will go to the far side, but that will do it for the second period. And the Beacons getting a huge goal in the second half of that period from Isabella Henningsen Brown after the Beacons had killed off two penalties. Wasn't their strongest period, but they finished it strong after they had tied it. They had a few more good chances off the rush and we'll stand at 2-2 heading in to the third period. So we're going to step aside. That'll conclude our second period action. I'll be back here to go over our scoring summary and game stats. Andrew Bluestein here with you. We'll be right back here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in the Division 3. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the Presidential Scholarship, which was huge for me. I think there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience for me. Cheer for the stumble. That he should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. The University of Massachusetts, Boston with its scenic oceanfront campus, easily accessible to downtown Boston, is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. New Year's Eve basketball in Beaconville women's basketball taking on Eastern Nazarene College to close out the 2022 calendar year. 
and it would be a good one at the start. Early on, the Beacons trailing 7-0. Tatiana Fevry, who had a career game with 10 points in six boards, lays it up at home there as the Beacons cut into that 7-0 deficit down to 7-2. And then to end off the first quarter, Sabela Jensen with a layup after the steal, and then Fevry with a layup of her own. Beacons head into the second quarter, tied up at 11-all, and the second quarter would be a big one for the Beacons. How many points can Alexa Potter score for this Beacon squad in the second? There you see she's already got four, and then another layup there makes it six. The Beacons in control by 12 now. Potter getting the pass right there, makes it eight, and now she's going to have 10 on this pass from February. Later on, it's going to be 12 in the post down low. The mismatch gets it to fall. The Beacons just pulling away in this one. 14 points right here on another layup. And then Potter's actually going to close out the second quarter on this rebound and layup. 16 points for Alexa Potter in the second quarter alone. The Beacons head into halftime, leading by 22 after a 28-6 to second quarter. And then in the third, Meg Dixon scores eight points for the Beacons. Dixon had a big day, 23 points and 13 rebounds for her fourth double-double of the season in 31 minutes. You see this one right here on the jumper with just under two minutes to go in the third. And then at the buzzer, Sunny Green with the jumper. Beacons still in control heading into the fourth quarter of this one. And then down the stretch, Paige Olivier with a pair of three-pointers. Helps extend the Beacon lead up to 30 points. Olivier from the left side right there makes that six points on the afternoon. And then Emily Garufi off the bench with a two-pointer. Closing out the Beacons day with a 70-38 to victory at home. The Beacons getting back on track after falling to 6-6 six and six on the year. They are now 7-6 and six heading into the 2023 calendar year. They kick off their Little East Conference slate of games in the new year on January 4th, a Wednesday night on the road against Castleton University at 5 o'clock p.m. UMass Boston. And welcome back here inside Edward T. Berry Ice Rink on the campus of UMass Boston. We're knotted up at two goals apiece at the end of two. Coma State, UMass Boston heading into the third period as we'll take a look at our second period scoring summary as the only goal in the second coming from UMass it was off the stick of Isabella Henningsen Brown grabbing her second of the season and it says on the score sheet that Katie Wilbur got the assist but I believe it was Kripaldi who made the centering pass so we'll see if that changes but that's where we stand here. The Beacons getting a huge goal after they had a little bit of struggles generating some offense in the beginning of that second period. Had to kill off a couple penalties. But they were buzzing at the end of that second period. And we'll see if they can pull that momentum into the third. Let's take a look at our game stats up to this point. As the Panthers in the edge with the shots, 24-20. Leah Bosch making 22 saves for the Beacon. She has been spectacular today, making a bunch of timely saves in that second period right before the Beacons tied it. So Leah Bosch solid in net once again. And Amelia Julian making 18 saves of her own for the Panthers. She was a bit busy at the end of that second period. She made a few big saves off of a couple odd man rushes for the Beacons as the Panthers pull ahead in the face-off department in that second period as they now have the edge 19 to 18. And only two power plays in this game, both for Plymouth State, and they were 0 for 2. As the Beacons penalty kill doing a good job on a solid power play. The Panthers nine power play goals on the season, so the Beacons doing a good job there. Generating that momentum leading to that tying goal. Well, that's where we, that's where we stand right now at Edward T. Berry Ice Rink heading into the third period. We got a solid game here. It's a conference game as the Plymouth State Panthers 2, the UMass Boston Beacons 2. That'll wrap up our second intermission coverage. Andrew Bluestein here with you. We'll be back for the third period here on the Beacons Broadcast Network. UMass Boston men's ice hockey in the 57th annual Codfish Bowl Championship game taking on Albertus Magnus Cobbs looking to defend 
their title from a year ago. And it would be a big day for Sam Best early on. A save just like he did in the first period a day before against Fitchburg State. Another big one right there against Albertus Magnus helps keep the game at 0-0. A short while later, off the turnover from the Falcons, Corey Clifton, the power play goal on pass from Grady Friedman and Mike Manzo, his third of the season, helped put the Beacons in front one nothing early, but right on back to Sam Best, who was really the story of this on the defensive end for the Beacons. 35 saves in this one, nine first period saves. We see another one right there, and then we're going to see another one right after that. After a turnover there on the defensive end for the Beacons, deflecting a shot away. Corey Clifton looks to make it 2 nothing for the Beacons, firing on Logan Bateman. He's turned away, and we head right on over to the second. Bateman standing strong in net. For the Falcons right there against Mike Manzo and then Best on the other end matching it with two saves against the Falcons. With the Falcons on a power play, Clay Bankowskis forces a turnover for the Beacons. One-on-one -on -one with Bateman deflected away and it stays 1-0. But then Grady Friedman on these two nice passes from Corey Clifton and Mike Manzo nets his fifth goal of the season. He leads the team with five goals this season and the Beacons are now in control 2-0 just over 15 minutes into this game. The big game-changing moment would come later on in the second period. Michael Kropinski hit hard by Austin Cook. It would result in a five-minute penalty as well as a two-minute bench misconduct penalty for Albertus Magnus. And it would lead to this power play goal from Blake Coleman. His first of the season, Mike Manzo off the faceoff, gets it to him. And the Beacons now up 3 nothing. This was their second of three power play goals in this one. They were three for five on the power play and had five power play goals in the tournament this week. And you see Sam Best on a breakaway attempt stops that one. We head to the third. Best once again standing strong in net. And then eventually Luke James would break through for the only goal of the afternoon for Albertus Magnus. Helps cut the deficit down to three to one. But just under 20 seconds later, Blake Coleman again off the faceoff. On a power play goal, once again, his second of the game and second of the season on the pass from Manzo off the faceoff. The Beacons are up 4-1. to one. And then Bankowskis again on the breakaway, looking to do it again. Can he get the fifth goal today for the Beacons? No. Bateman stays strong in net. And then Sam Best finishing off that 35-save day with yet another save. And the Beacons win their seventh Codfish Bowl championship against Albertus Magnus College at home 4-1. to one. The Beacons have won back-to-back -back titles for the second cheer for the stumble that he should have had that save and the tear that lingered for in those moments greatness lies there you will find the provoked the determined the unified it's in those moments that champions are born. The University of Massachusetts Boston, with a scenic oceanfront campus, easily accessible to downtown Boston, is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. 16 NCAA Division III schools are part of the more than 100 student organizations that create an engaging campus life in America's biggest and best college town. UMass Boston, Boston's urban public research university for the 21st century. Division three allows you to give yourself to other things. Just having that free time allows me to pursue the things that I want to pursue. Division three in athletics affords students the opportunity to, you know, engage in their interests in their campus and in their lives outside of that sport. It allows you to just be able to do everything you want to do. How it went Moving from Turkey, it was a rough journey for me because when you don't really speak the language that well and when you don't really fit in the crowd, it's very easy to disappear. But I decided not to give up, so, and UMass helped me. <laughs> UMass Boston was my first choice because when I came to the campus, I saw that there was a lot of diversity, there's a lot of people. Um, here there's a lot of international students, so it's really cool to meet people from different countries, different parts of the world. I'm Julia Mercy, I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. I'm Olivia Murphy, I'm from Canton, Massachusetts. We're sisters. We're sisters. <laughs> I play volleyball and she plays basketball. Here they have a freshman success community, 
so each major has their own community that you can join as a freshman and you take classes with them, you do study groups with them. So it was really helpful getting to know people in your major right away. So in health exercise sciences, we have an internship at the end where it's so much better to have like an advisor helping you out, like telling you which classes to choose. People at UMass Boston, they're here because they know they can have an impact, not just on research, but on people, on their students. This is just a stopping point. It only has potential to grow, and it has a big potential to grow up. You're really having a direct impact on people's lives, and you can see that now, and you can see that years from now. So I think it's becoming like a place that people want to go, but UMass Boston is able to offer to its young people certainly stands out to that mission that was set right out in the beginning. It's something UMass Boston should be and can be very proud about. Welcome back inside Edward T. Berry Ice Rink on the campus of UMass Boston as we got a barn burner going here as heading into the third period, Plymouth State 2, Beacons 2. Andrew Bluestein here with you on the Beacons Broadcast Network as we're about to get underway for third period action, waiting for both teams to take the ice. But the story of this one today has been the forecheck. Both teams, when they've been able to generate, they've created scoring opportunities and the Beacons had a tough time doing that in the majority of that second period. They got a surge at the end after they killed off two penalties. They were able to tie it up. Pennington Brown getting her second of the season. Uh, nice play at the front of the net whacking it home. That's where we stand now. But we saw in the first period when the Beacons were able to get the puck in behind the Panthers defense they had generated opportunities. We also saw them generate a few chances off the rush at the end of that second period. But Amelia Julian, Panthers netminder, making a couple of big saves. Both teams lining up for what should be an interesting third period. Talked about it off the top of the broadcast. UMass has lost four in a row coming into today. The Panthers eight in a row. Somebody's got to win unless we end in a tie in overtime. But we hope that's not the case as we're underway for third period action. That puck sent in on Leah Bosch. She'll play it ahead for Kozic. Kozic gets it to Leonard in the middle. Tries to whack it ahead. That got disrupted by Taylor Thomas. Now back to center, Lauren McNeil. She'll backhand it in. Gabby Schantz, though, with it. She'll take it behind her own net. Look to reverse it for Maggio. Gives it away. Centering pass. Leonard was right there. Sent out to the point. And a nice block there by Liz Cramp. Getting in the way of the shot from McNeil. McNeil's second chance goes to the front of the net. Bosch may have got a piece of it. Back the other way. Liz Cramp with speed. On the outside, she'll flip it in. Puck will ride the frictionless ice all the way to the near side. Favors the Panthers there as that one wheeled through the middle by Thomas. She'll head off for a change. Chipped in by Megan Hamilton. First there, though, is Giuliano. That's chipped up for uh, Adriana Cripaldi. Couldn't handle it cleanly as that one... Sent back towards the Beacons blue line. Grapaldi there, though. Wilbert off the bench. Swooping in. She'll enter. Losing her stick, though, as the puck will go to the corner. But Henningson Brown, relentless there, had it for a moment and lost it as Isabella Borbridge doing a good job there. Trying to exit on the far side was McGee. Gives it away. Leonard sends it. Or rather, that was Buddington. Now it's tied up in the corner. It comes back behind the net as Megan Hamilton... Banks that one off the glass, hits a stanchion, chipped back to center by Robin Grant. Wilbert turns and wheels it right back in, and the Beacons will change up. 
as the Panthers do as well. McGee, head manning it through center ice. The deep defenseman chips it in. Mia Boyd to McDougal, tried to hit Hansen through the middle, just ahead of her stick, and she would have had speed through center ice. Butters off the stick of Rapler, she'll chip it ahead, and this will be no icing as McDougal wins the race. Good speed from McDougal as the puck tied up in the corner. Hannah McDougal stays with it, behind the net. Takes it to the outside. Now up top, towards the middle. McDougal on a tour of the offensive zone. Plays it off the skate of DeSimone. That one chipped in by Butters. Getting there first was Zanaboni. As she tries to chip it out, that's played through the middle. DeSimone, a chance for a two on one. The other way. Swanson, to DeSimone to Swanson. Great save by Bosch. And another great save on the rebound. Leah Bosch shutting the door. She has been marvelous all afternoon and making her two best saves there. Larceny as Leah Bosch on her game. That stretch pass gets disrupted by Carson Moffett. As that gets chipped in, Mia Boyd plays it behind her net. Webster there. Webster tries the stretch pass for Cramp. Cramp with speed trying to win the race. And they say she does, so no icing. Great effort by Liz Cramp. She stays with it, walks it up front, and scores! What an effort by Liz Cramp. Negates the icing and then takes it on her own towards the middle of the net and buries it. And the Beacons lead it 3-2. What an effort by Liz Cramp. Never gave up on the icing as head coach Molly Fitzpatrick in her first season for the Panthers talking to the officials as she thought it should have been icing. She may have an argument, but you have to remember the icing rule is not who wins the race. It's who the official thinks would get to the puck first. As couldn't remember the player who was she was racing with. I think it was McGee. And it, McGee had did get to the red line first, but it was clear that Liz Cramp was going to get to the puck first as she had the better angle. And she found the puck and took it towards the front of the net and buries it on the blocker's side. And the goal looks like it's going to stand as very seldom do you see a goal get overturned. So the Beacons... Off and running at the start of this third period. Have a 3-2 goal, or 3-2 lead rather. And that one sent in. Buddington back to get it. As stepping in was Carrillo. The Beacons look to break out again as Wilbert will draw a penalty. So the Beacons will have their first power play of the game. Henningson Brown trying to stay with it and gets closed out by Taylor Thompson. But the Beacons to the power play. And a great effort by Katie Wilbert drawing that penalty. She had speed through the neutral zone as we take a look at the goal by Liz Cramp. Just an all around great effort. Able to win the puck in the corner, work her way towards the front of the net, and beating Amelia Julian on the blocker side. But back to business as the Beacons have a power play looking to extend the lead here in the third. It was Leonard on the draw, and she took an elbow up high there from Megan Hamilton as Trapaldi tries to muscle it through. Leonard a chance. That one got blocked away. Not sure if it got through. McDougal staying with it on the far side. Gets it to Bunnington in the middle. Bunnington towards Goldhurst shot. That one goes wide. McDougal tries to play it off the boards. Couldn't get it. She stays with it, though. Gets it to Leonard at the top of the circle. Leonard protects the puck. Gets it to Bunnington up top. Now over to Shantz, Shantz a shot, puck's loose in front, still two, er, still loose and tied up as the whistle goes. Nice job by Julian finding that puck. As another great opportunity generated by the Beacons. Just three power play goals for them coming into this game. 
sitting at about 6%. So power play goal here would be huge. Emily Hansen. As the Panthers able to win that draw. But Hansen finds the loose puck. Beacons control. Hansen to the outside. Up top for Butters. Back to Hansen. Hansen tries to get towards goal. That one was blocked by Augustson. Now Butters up top. Walks in. Her shot deflected just wide. Wilbur tries to get the rebound and tuck it in. But she couldn't. Liz Cramp stays with it. Kozic up top at the point. Down low. Liz Cramp. Now Wilbert. Wilbert shot. That one blocked and goes just wide on the glove side. As that one tried to get chipped all the way down. And Butters was trying to get it to Kozic. And it was a missed pass. And it goes all the way to the Beacons end. 40 seconds to go on the Beacons power play. Kaylee Kozic with speed enters. Takes it around behind the net. Stays with it to the far side. Now Butters up top. Butters moving it over for Wilbert. Wilbert towards the middle looking to shoot. She does. That one kicked aside by Julian. That one tried to get cleared, but Butters able to keep it in. Cramp chips it in front of the net. That goes now behind. Cramp stays with it as she gets written to the boards by McNeil. He can stay with it, though. Buddington throws it towards goal. That goes wide. Hansen behind the net. Final 10 seconds of the power play. Cramp had it and lost it. Buddington now finds it. She throws towards goal. Wilbert knocked it down, and that'll do it for the Beacons power play. They stay with it, though. Buddington up top throws it towards goal. That one blocked away by Julian. Might have hit her stick to change directions awkwardly. Now Simone looking to exit. Nice move through the middle. Gets it to the neutral zone. Robin Grant turns it over, though. McDougal stays with it. She'll enter. Slips it through, looking for Rapler, but it went under her stick. Leonard, though, gets it on the far side. Leonard, shielding the puck, tries to tuck it for Rapler, and it goes right onto the stick of Augustin, but Rapler gets it back and enters, leaves it for McDougal. McDougal will chip it in. That goes behind the net. Rapler shields the puck, gets tied up, as now Leonard lost the puck, and that one's chipped to the near side as Carter chips it back to center, but it goes right to Giuliano. Giuliano turns and wheels it right back in, but this will be an icing as she was behind the red line. So the face-off back to the beacon zone, but I'll tell you what, they have dominated so far to start this first or third period, 13, 15 to go, and it's been all beacons aside for maybe one or two opportunities for the Panthers. And it was the two big saves from Leah Bosch, which Probably got the Beacons bench up and moving. That one sent to the near side. As Addie Swanson with it. Gets it up top of the point. McGee, her shot goes just wide. As now Borbridge sends it down low. That one goes under the stick of Libby Carter. Keeping it in was Swanson. But Leonard able to chip it back to center. Good job by Morgan Cunningham out muscling Leonard as Borbridge plays it through the middle on the stick of Carter. She'll enter the zone. Carter working on her own. Takes it to the outside. Now peels back. Banks it off the boards for Borbridge. Borbridge tried to thread the needle to Perillo coming off the bench, but it got disrupted. Henningson Brown, a collision there, sending Perillo to the ice. Now a shot saved by Bosch and the rebound collected by Webster. Webster tried to chip it out, hit escape, and it'll stay in. That one's sent back in by Libby Carter behind the net. Now Webster there. Webster trying to maneuver around Mofet, but good job as Wilbert goes hard to the ice. Now the puck up top at the point. Smith, her shot goes well wide, perhaps an intentional pass, or an intentional wide shot for a pass off the boards, tied up behind the net. Henningson Brown. Will swoop in and collect that one. Tried to move it up as it goes to the neutral zone. And a big collision there as Henningson Brown, the bigger body on Augustson as she went to the ice. Wilbert doing a good job on the forecheck. Battling hard. She'll chip it down low. Henningson Brown will collect it. Takes it to the outside. Has Shantz at the point. Calling for it. Down low in front. And a great save. Getting a piece of it was Julian. Went off of the edge of her blocker. But a great opportunity by the Beacons as Wilbert was wide open in front point blank 
And a great save by the Panthers netminder there. But another great opportunity generated by the Beacons. As they've done a good job of that high to low game so far in this third. 11-18 to go. Face off to the left of Julian. It'll be Leonard and Hamilton. As we wait for the linesman to drop the puck. Panthers win the draw, stretch pass. Thomas didn't know where the puck was, now she finds it. And no icing as she was ahead of Schantz. Now it's tied up on the end boards. Schantz and Thomas is now Maggio coming in, digging in there as well as Chantel Ross. It comes loose, Ross first on it. It's stapled to the boards by Schantz. Comes out to the point. Zanaboni trying to keep it in as it's tied up in some skates and it's chipped back into the far corner. Schantz behind her own net. It's Liz Cramp on the far wing. Cramp trying to maneuver through center. She's able to, good stick handling job. And another collision and the Beacons are gonna be short-handed as a little too much contact there from Liz Cramp as she has been buzzing in this third period. So the extra attacker on for the Panthers and a whistle. And we're gonna get, it's gonna end up being a cross check on Liz Cramp. She'll sit down for two, but she's brought the energy as we get a look at the opportunity from Wilbert and just getting a piece of it with the blocker there was Julian, but a great set play there with Wilbert in front. And I believe Molly Fitzpatrick has called timeout. And she has indeed, so the Panthers will talk things over. As you see the penalty here, Cramp taking it. And not sure if it was the initial contact. It was kind of one of those reverse hits as she didn't initiate the contact, but she may have gave a little extra tap after the player had already been on the ice and that may have been what got her the two minutes. But nonetheless, Liz Cramp has been a menace in a good way in this third period, especially for the Panthers as she single-handedly gave the Beacons the lead, beating out the icing, and then able to win the puck in the corner, and she took it to the front of the net and buried it. As both teams at the bench talking things over, as we take another look here at the penalty. And I believe, yeah, that's, I think it was the second little tap there on the head at the end is what got Cramp the penalty and you can understand that. But she did not initiate the contact, she was the puck carrier there, so. Well, that will conclude the timeout here, both teams lining up from a state with their third power play opportunity of the afternoon here. And they'll send out Hamilton to take the draw, but Wilbert able to win it. Buddington tried to clear it, went off of Schantz, goes to the far side. Schantz gets there and she'll try to get it out, but it goes into the Beacons bench. So the faceoff will stay in the UMass zone. Tough break. As it looked like Buddington had sent it down the river, but Gabby Schantz was in the way and the puck find, found her. Panthers control the faceoff. Forbridge walking in, blocked by Wilbert. As Schantz tried to play it out, couldn't, kept in. Forbridge now to DeSimone, a shot on goal. And Leah Bosch, once again seeing it all the way, no rebound, and she'll smother it. She has been stupendous today. Making another timely save. 9.52 to go in this one. 1.35 to go on the power play. A uh, false start off the faceoff, so we'll do it again. Addie Swanson, Katie Wilbert on the draw. It's a stalemate. 
Swooping in, though, was Hamilton to win it. She'll take it behind the net. Hamilton looking in front, now to the outside. We'll send it back down low for Ross. Ross tried to center it, and that was disrupted by Buddington. But it comes out to Borbridge at the point. Was looking for Swanson, and it goes back to the point. Borbridge over to DeSimone, backdoor chance as Ross had an open side, maybe fanned on it a little bit as that one comes back to the blue line. And a big collision there as Katie Wilbert putting a shoulder into Swanson. Surprised there was no call on that. As there is no checking in women's hockey, but the officials have certainly let them get away with a lot today. Swanson enters, tries to throw it towards goal. That was sticked away by Shantz. Wilbert gets the rebound, and she'll send it the length of the rink. As this will be the final 30 seconds of the Plymouth State power play. Good job by McDougal, wins the puck, gets it to Butters out top. Her shot gets knocked down, puck still loose in front. Now goes to the far side, Mia Boyd will backhand it in. Beacon's penalty killer is doing a great job here as the final 15 seconds of the Panthers power play. Perillo enters the zone, looking in the middle for Grant. Goes to the corner, Boyd plays it all the way around the kick blade. Not out, kept in by Mopet. As that one comes to the middle, Borbridge, that'll do it for the Panthers' power play. Borbridge tries to get to the front. Nice job by Boyd, sticks it away. Robin Grant, though, rescues the puck, has it on the far side. Will get it to the point. As that one throw towards the middle, sticked away by Boyd, now behind the net. As that one tucked in front by Thomas. As McDougal first there, can't get it out. That one rifled and it deflects and goes off of the end boards. Panthers looking to change up as Margot Butters will head man it to the neutral zone and stays with it. Brings it in. Butters, stick handles, now takes it behind the red line. Centering pass got tipped by McDougal and hit a body in front. Butters staying with it. Up top to Rafler. Rafler's shot gets deflected by a skate. Goes to the far side. McNeil now with it. Plays it on the near side for Hamilton with speed. She'll enter on the near side. Hamilton pulls up, tries to shoot, fanned on it. Maggio now with it. She'll take it behind her own net. Alina Maggio through the middle, turns it over. As McNeil will send that one as it's a tumbling muffin in on Leah Bosch and she'll just take a whistle and slow things down. And the Beacons with another big penalty kill as we look at the play there, big collision. And surprised that wasn't called for a penalty, but hey, you like to see the physicality in the game. As that shot from the point by McNeil goes wide, goes behind the net. Swanson tries to tuck it towards the crease, got blocked. McNeil with a chance, shoots, hits a body, still loose in front. Henningson Brown trying to find it. It gets pushed to the far side half wall. And that one goes under the stick of Zanaboni. A chance perhaps the other way. Wilbert trying to center it for Cripaldi. But a good job by McNeil to get back in position as she rides Wilbert to the far corner. Beacons try to stay with it. Wilbert had it. It was chipped away though by McNeil. A good shift for Ab er, McNeil as that one sent back into the Panthers end. Henningson Brown with it now, taking it behind the net. As Leonard up top, Leonard tried to shoot it, fanned on it, as Cripaldi with it, as it got stick to the near side. Cripaldi stays with it, gets it to Butters at the point as the puck wouldn't sit flat, and it goes back to center. Butters moving it up quickly for Cripaldi. Cripaldi has Leonard in the middle. Leonard going to go. Cripaldi a chance. Her shot gets blocked. Leonard battling. Getting there first, though, was McGee, tied up in the corner. As we're under six minutes here in the final period. Butters, rifles one towards goal, hits a body in front. And that was McGee who blocked it. And it goes back to center, Butters still with it. And she'll just send it in off the glass, no icing, and they'll change up. As McGee will send it to the near side for Ross. Ross, chipping it for Moffitt. Moffitt, it's a foot race with Maggio. Moffitt gets there first. She falls down though. Maggio trying to dig it out. Taylor Thomas in there as well. Hansen now comes in for support. As going to hard to the ice again was Carson Moffitt. Hansen comes out with it, looking to get it up. 
to the neutral zone. She does. And it's right to McNeil as that one sent back the other way. Nice play, though, by Hanson defensively. Sent into the beacon zone. Liz Cramp chips it ahead. Cramp tried to one-hand it, but it was whacked back into the beacon's end by Megan Hamilton. Now it's on the near side as Hamilton will try to slow things down. Now through the middle. That one bounces off the stick of Carello. Maggio with it. Flips it to the near side for Kozic. Tries to play it through the middle looking for Wilbert. It was intercepted by DeSimone. That one whacked by Hamilton. As now Gabby Schantz being bothered there by Morgan Cunningham. Giuliano off the stick of Wilbert. That one chipped back to center. Beacon's making a change. That one flipped off the glass by Borbridge as DeSimone will enter. DeSimone, nice move to the front, but it was Buddington there in good position to send things the other way. Now Allie Reifler with speed. She'll enter the offensive zone. Puck will slide off her stick. As Swanson now behind the net, banks it off the boards. Puck rides the dasher, and that one's sent back in by Webster. Or rather, that was Bunnington. Now it's tied up. Butters right back out there. As Reifler and Hansen had a bit of a miscommunication there. Is now back the other way comes DeSimone. DeSimone rifles it off the linesman. And that one's sent back into the Panthers zone, and this will be an icing. 3.33 to go in this third period. And we've seen some tremendous action. Beacons with a 3-2 lead off the stick of Liz Cramp, which I believe will be an unassisted goal. And now the Beacons will take a timeout. Danielle Blanchard in her second season will try to slow things down here. But what a hockey game we have had up to this point. As Said it, hate to keep bringing this up, but both these teams on losing streaks, you knew they were going to be hungry coming into this game. And both teams certainly have been all afternoon. Beacons hit a little bit of a lull in the second period, but they found their game towards the end. Able to tie it up and now have the lead here in the third. As we mentioned, up the great effort by Liz Cramp, who... Beat out an icing, it was a questionable call as the Panthers thought they had won the race and they probably did, but as I previously stated, it, the icing rule is not who wins the race, it's who the official believes will get to the puck first. And I think Liz Cramp would have gotten to the puck first because she did and she was able to finish it off. So that was the reason for the no icing and the Plymouth State bench was not too happy. Molly Fitzpatrick, head coach in her first season, was talking to the official for a good amount of time after that goal. But still on the scoreboard and the Beacons leading 3-2. The only time they have led today. They trailed 1-0 and 2-1. And now find themselves ahead by one here with 3.32 to go as we drop the puck. Wilbert wins the faceoff. Shantz behind her own net. Taking it to the far side. Gabby Shantz. Good individual effort chipping it to the neutral zone. That one flipped, but Wilbert there. Wilbert tied up as Ross was first on it. He gets chipped back into the Panthers zone. Kozic intercepts the exit pass, and it bounced off her stick. As that one back to center. Oh, that one just ahead of Chantal Ross. She might have had a two-on-one with Taylor Thomas going towards goal, but the puck slid under her stick. Now Wilbert through center ice. She'll flip it in. Going to chase that is Isabel Borbridge. She'll try to play it off the half wall, but kept in by Butters. Butters shooting, deflects, pucks loose in front. Wilbert tried to wheel it towards the goal, but it didn't get through. Inside three minutes now. Cramp will flip that one. In on the goaltender, Julian sticks it for Abigail McGee, moving it through the center. As Megan Hamilton had that puck explode off her stick. Now McNeil tried to move it up, runs into Hansen. McNeil stays with it, tries to move it to Grant on the far side, too far ahead as Shantz was there. Shantz tried to play it through, turns it over, and the Plymouth 
State Panthers have pulled their goalie, the extra attacker out. That shot goes wide. So an empty net. Pucks in front. As that one chipped back to the point, McNeil pulls it to the forehand. Shot blocked by McDougal. Rifler will send it just wide of the net, and it'll be an icing. So the faceoff will come back to the beacon zone with 1.56 to go. The extra attacker out there for the Panthers. It should be an interesting finish here. Emily Hansen and Addie Swanson on the faceoff. Hansen wins it. Mia Boyd back to get it. Chips it, but it's stonewalled there by Perillo. She stays with it. Now gets it for Swanson. Up top for Borbridge. Now back to Swanson. Swanson tries to get it to the net. Blocked by Boyd. She'll chip it out. Looking for Rapler. Getting there first though is McGee. McGee will circle back behind her own net. As they'll slow things down. Looking for a rush the other way. 1.30 to go. That one played through the middle. Cramp got her stick on it. Disrupts it. Borbridge back to get it in her own end. Chips it ahead. Bunnington comes in, but it was offside. Cramp tags up. As the Panthers trying to exit their own end, they can't. Wilbert first on it. Wilbert backhands it for Bunnington. As that one stays in, but it's offside, the Panthers will have to tag up. As we approach the final minute of this one, Butters tries for the empty net, and that one goes wide, and it'll be an icing. So the faceoff will come back to the Beacon's end with 55 seconds to go. As Butters tried to end it there, but just missed. As now it'll be Wilbert and Mofet on the faceoff to the right of Leah Bosch. Wilbert able to win the draw, but getting there first was Ross. Ross behind the net. Plays it over for DeSimone, centering pass off a skate. A chance, Cramp knocks it away. Cramp chips it up through the middle. Cramp gets there first, tries to get around McNeil. Cramp stays with it, and she'll just send it in. Smart play by Liz Cramp. Time ticking off the clock. Approaching 30 seconds. It goes behind the net. Augustson, as Liz Cramp once again, doing a great job as the puck goes towards the front of the net. And Kozic got whacked with a high stick and the official did not call it. Now with speed the other way. Libby Carter couldn't get it ahead. Let's cramp in the final 10, just about. Wilbert enters the zone. Gets shoved aside by Thomas. Back the other way, Libby Carter in the final five. The puck will stay at center, and that will do it. So UMass will snap their four-game losing streak and get a much needed victory here over the Plymouth State Panthers, a conference victory, which is huge as they'll go to 500, now four and four in conference play, and the struggles continue for the Panthers if they have now lost nine games in a row. But what a hockey game here this afternoon, two hungry teams going wire to wire, and it was the Beacons who came out with the victory in the end is Liz Cramp doing a great job individually on the 3-2 goal on the 3-2 winner as the Beacons as I mentioned a huge win as both teams shake hands and that'll be the final 3-2 the Beacons over the Plymouth State Panthers we'll be back to go over the third period scoring summary and the final game stats of this one. Andrew Bluestein here with you. We'll be right back on the Beacons Broadcast Network. Proportion to me is the lived experience of our Division III student athletes. They balance life from an academic perspective and the rigors of competing at a high level, bonding with teammates and building lifelong friendships. But they also are involved in their communities. They work jobs and internships and volunteer. They've learned to be resilient. Diverse experiences are setting them up for the future. Passion's love. The five campus UMass system is the university that educates the workforce of Massachusetts. We recognize that we are truly here for a reason. And that recognition 
inspires us and drives us every single day. Responsibility is being accountable for your words and actions, first and foremost. It also is an obligation to be a positive influence in the communities around you. Being in a D3 program, you're going to have lots of different opportunities. You're not just an athlete. You're also involved in student life. Your academics are extremely important. We give a lot of our student athletes responsibilities right from the start by giving them leadership opportunities, by having them engage in the community, being a positive influence. That's being a responsible person. I believe sportsmanship is a, it's a mutual admiration and respect for your fellow competitors. We all go through a lot to reach the point where we compete against one another. It's important to realize that. So once we're finally on the field or on the court or on the starting block, we look at each other as fellow human beings and not just competitors. Being able to recognize the hard work that other athletes are putting in creates a more positive and inclusive environment. Comprehensive learning is being able to adapt to experiences and apply the things that I learned. Being an athlete and juggling academics helped me grow as a person and things that I've learned, I was able to apply it in another field, putting them into everyday life. Developing comprehensive learning helped me prioritize certain things to make sure I get to where I wanna be. Paris changed my life and I got there through UMass. Those very specific seminal moments in Paris. The subway. A man in a tuxedo walked in and a woman in a long gown. And it was stunning. It all hit me. It was, it was like a lightning bolt. There was this world of beauty, style that I wanted to be a part of. That was the beginning of the journey. And that all came through the University of Massachusetts. And that was really a key moment for me. It's one of those moments you never forget. Celebrate the soggy shoes and the slow start. Celebrate the lessons learned along the way. These are the limits. Not the shiny nail biting kind. These are the last a lifetime kind. Something I discovered in myself is that if I have a goal, I can accomplish it. It's a well-rounded experience. At a Division three school, you primarily are a student-athlete, so the school is really shaped around you developing yourself as a complete individual. It helps a lot that you have a family with your team that can guide you. get good grades and to do well. But it also made me realize that I have a lot of career goals. You're there to get a full college experience, not only participate in your sport, but participate in things outside of that. And it's all about growing as a person. My coaches have helped me with figuring out who I really am. Their lives are dedicated for us to succeed. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. I'm the first undergraduate alumnus to uh, lead this university. I'm very proud of that. I was literally able to transform my life because of the University of Massachusetts, and I want that for every single student that walks through the door. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. I did receive a non-athletic scholarship upon entering uh, school. I got the Presidential Scholarship, which was huge for me. 
there's more opportunities for academic scholarships in Division Three. I did receive academic scholarships. Just being involved on campus, being a leader, all those things combined kind of get me recognized. It's a great experience. And Cheer for the stumble. That he should have had that. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. University of Massachusetts, Boston, with a scenic oceanfront campus, easily accessible to downtown Boston, is recognized as a model of excellence for urban public universities. 16 NCAA Division III schools are part of the more than 100 student organizations that create an engaging campus life in America's biggest and best college town. UMass Boston, Boston's urban public research university for the 21st century. Division three allows you to give yourself to other things. Just having that free time allows me to pursue the things that I want to pursue. Division three athletics affords students the opportunity to, you know, engage in their interests in their campus and in their lives outside of that sport. It allows you to just be able to do everything you want to do. How it went changes the whole world. Moving from Turkey, it was a rough. Hey, welcome back here inside Edward T. Barry Ice Rink. To wrap things up here after the Beacons snap their four game losing streak, getting a big 3 2 win over Plymouth State. And they now go to 500 in conference play at 4 and 4. As we look at the third period scoring summary and the game scoring summary, as opening the scoring was Plymouth State, as Isabella Borbridge got, their, got her team on the board. From Addie Swanson and Emily DeSimone. That was Borbridge's first of the season. Adriana Cripaldi grabbing her first collegiate goal, tying things up. Liz Cramp and Addie Bunnington on the assists. The Panthers then would retake the lead. Robin Grant from Brenna Smith. And Isabella Henningson Brown grabbing her second of the season from Katie Wilbert and Adriana Cripaldi. And then in the third period, it was Liz Cramp on an Outstanding individual effort, beating out an icing call and maneuvering her way to the front of the net unassisted, and, and she buried it for her first of the season. And that's our scoring summary for this one, as we'll take a look at our game stats from today's contest. As shots pretty close. Panthers had the edge, 29-26 saves. 27 for Leah Bosch, who was just more than spectacular today. Can't say enough good things about her play made countless big saves keeping her team in the game and you could tell that her team generated a lot of momentum off of the saves that she made 23 saves for her counter as Amelia Julian also making a few big saves for the Panthers face-offs Panthers winning in that battle 28 to 22 Beacons were 0 for 1 on the power play their struggles continue they did generate some good looks but unable to cash in and you see the penalties there, three for six minutes and then one for two for the Panthers. And now we'll take a look at our three stars of the game. Our third star, Isabella Henningsen-Brown, grabbing the game-tying goal as tying things up at two. Great positioning in front of the net, getting the pass from Capaldi. Second star, Leah Bosch. We said, as I said, spectacular in goal, 27 saves. The two goals they scored were not her fault. She was spectacular, making a great save or two saves on an opportunity in the third period where she went across her crease getting her pad on it, and then the rebound, she got her pad on as well. Just an incredible save, all-around great job by Leah Bosch. And then our first star, Liz Cramp, a goal and an assist. She was spectacular. She was all over the ice like a Tasmanian devil out there, just creating chances and physicality she actually took a penalty in the third period off of a reverse hit that was a questionable call but just a great effort all around by three these three players today for the beacons 
And with that, we'll thank our productions team and everyone else who helped out today. Producer Michael Vesey, director Maria Spilios, camera operators Gina Albano, Luke Levitt, Georgia Bonnie, Aiden McMillan, and as always, Tam Landry on graphics. Replay, Alina Albano as always as well. And I'm Andrew Bluestein signing off once again. Your final score, the UMass Boston Beacons 3, the Plymouth State Panthers 2, and the Beacons snap their four-game losing streak. And with that, we'll wrap.